Good morning, JFC. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm so happy to be here and deliver a little drop in Devo for you today. Uh, this is something that I actually read in my devotional a couple days ago uh, with my own little twist on it. Um, and so my title is, Yet I Will Rejoice. And so I want to read out of Philippians chapter 4 for you. It's verses uh, 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I love this verse. And here it's telling us to rejoice always, which means it's in the good times and in the bad times. But when I hear the word rejoice, it's something that we commonly don't really use when we speak. Uh, so I was listening to a sermon by Tim Tebow, and he was preaching on this, and he found a different definition of the word rejoice, and that is to express confidence in. And so if I take that and replace the word rejoice with that, it sounds like this. Express confidence in the Lord always. I will say it again. Express confidence in the Lord. And so when I read it that way, it makes a lot more sense. Because we know that God is good and we can always express that we are confident with what God is bringing into our lives. Uh, another thing too is, if we take a little backstory on the book of Philippians. Um, the book of Philippians is actually has been said to be the most joyful and happy book in, happiest book in the Bible. And the crazy thing is, is the book of Philippians was written by Paul while he was in prison. And you think about that. And historians have believed that Paul, when he was in prison, was in the bottom or the basement of the prison, which is where all of the waste and everything would go in the building. So Paul is writing the most joyful and happiest book in the Bible, sitting in a beautiful smell of everything that has been flushed through the prison. Right, and he's, he's writing the happiest book of the Bible. That's crazy to me to think. You know, if I was to be in Paul's position, I probably would not be the happiest person in the world. But yet, here's Paul being happy. Um, and so when you think about that, I think about Paul not being finding his happiness or his joy in his circumstances, but he's finding his joy in the Lord. He's always keeping his mind and his thoughts and his focus on the Lord. And if you read more into Paul's writing, there are times where he talks about how people, I'm just giving people Jesus and people are getting excited and they're getting passionate and they're sharing with people in prison and people are getting on fire for the Lord. And that's where Paul's vision was. So I think about that in our lives, right? Here we are on lockdown. Maybe you have lost your job. Maybe you are having marriage issues. Maybe you're having, uh, issues with friends, you know, all the kinds of things, right? Are you finding your happiness or your joy or any of your moods and your circumstances or are you keeping your focus on the Lord? And as people, I believe that there are many times where we use our circumstances to, to find our happiness or our joy or our, our frustrations, right? We lose focus of God. And so I want to encourage you to stay focused on the Lord. Find your happiness, find your joy in the Lord. <clears throat> The next thing I want to share with you is in the book of Habakkuk. Um, and this is actually one of my most favorite verses that I've recently stumbled on. And so I'll read it for you. It's chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. And it says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grape grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, that's my favorite part, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. And if we think about this in biblical times, where it's listed the fig trees, the grapes, the olives, if there's no food, there's no sheep, there's no cattle, that was the way that people survived. That's the way that people lived and, and thrived during this time. And here he's saying, if none of this is here, yet I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. It doesn't matter how rough I have it. I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. I'm still going to express confidence in the Lord. 
Because we know ultimately that God is good and God has a great plan through everything, no matter good or bad. And so I want to encourage you to do something and I encourage my youth group kids to do the same thing. Instead of the things listed here in the verses, maybe take some things in your life. Though I've lost my job, though I'm having marriage issues, though I'm having financial problems, and then take 18 and put that right under that. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. So my, my uh, prayer for you and my encouragement for you today is continue to stay focused on God no matter what your circumstances are. If you can continue to stay focused on the Lord, we know that God is good and God's got a great plan for everything in our lives. Focus on God. Don't let your circumstances dictate how you're feeling or your mood. Focus on the Lord and everything will be great from there. Hope you guys have an awesome day. We miss you. We love you. We'll see you soon.